we are back with our Studying the Pro series, where we break down gameplay from some of the best Warzone players out there. Now, today we've got a 35-kill game here from FIFA Kills, who's easily one of the best Warzone players. He was one of the best in Warzone 1, has really transitioned well into Warzone 2, and he's actually somebody that I've watched a lot to improve my own game. But starting off right here, they're going to go ahead and land top of Observatory. One quick thing that I do want to give you for context, this is a 2v2 wager kill race. So it's FIFA Kill and Omid Adrian versus the other two guys who can get the most amount of kills possible. So they are not landing together. They're not going to be playing together that much. They're going to constantly be fighting out numbered. We're going to really focus on that. But starting off with landing in, guys, if you are landing hot, trust your starter pistol. Do not feel like you have to find a gun because this starter pistol is very good. It's very, it has really good range, has really good bullet velocity, does really good damage. And you see that right there. I mean, Adrian does not have a gun here as well. They both have the starter pistol and they are able to down that guy from that far away. So if you land in and it's hot and you you can't find a gun go to work with that pistol as much as you possibly can right here he's going to throw in plates he's going to reload he hears some people below once again he's going to be able to challenge we see it here again you know he's breaking that guy and has that guy low health with the starter pistol he is yet to think about a gun now right here he's able to get the knock he goes down himself, but Adrian is able to get the team wipe right there. And by the way, when I said 35 kills, they have four kills in the wager to start, but this is just FIFA kill dropping 35. You know, it's not both of them. It is just FIFA. Right here, he makes a little bit of a mistake. You know, he ends up not paying attention. He's kind of out in the open when getting revived. He's kind of looking around. There's a guy literally staring right at him. He's not fully paying attention, and he probably should have gotten to a little bit better spot. It almost cost him. And I want you to remember this moment because he is literally like less than a second from dying and you know for these pro players guys the gouge is pretty easy for them they might get they want to get two kills they're definitely going to get at least get one kill and they're more times than not i would say 95 percent of the time going to win so it's not that big of a deal but he doesn't want to burn it early still using the starter pistol right there able to get that kill uh adrian was and now they're kind of looting up a little bit their gameplay strategy before i get into what i really want to focus on today their gameplay strategy is a little bit different because they're going for a crazy number of kills you know they are in this kill race so they are going to look for a three play vest and then start challenging a lot of you i'd recommend slowing down a little bit, focusing on getting your loadout, then getting that momentum going, these guys are just going to start pushing. Now, in terms of what I want to talk about today, first is going to be rotations. How does he go about finding people? Because I think it's where a lot of you really struggle throughout this game, whether it's getting shot in the back or third party, whatever it may be. I want to focus on how he finds people. He uses a lot of different methods to do that. So we're going to highlight those throughout this game. The second is going to be his execution. Why aim is the most important thing. We're going to look at his positioning. When does he challenge versus, or when does he rechallenge versus not rechallenge? When does he change his pace and play fast versus slow? All of those different things that things that allow him to win gunfights. Starting off right here, guys, one of the best ways and why Observatory is so popular is because you can fly down a lot of different ways. You can fly down to Hydro, you can fly down to Said City, you can fly over to Pass or Village, and flying this high ground allows you to kind of scout the area. So he's looking for people on rooftops, he's looking for movement, he's looking for shots being fired, anything that he can figure out to go, okay, there's definitely some people over there, and we're going to see that right here. He's looking that way, can't find anything, but as he looks right, he's going to see two things. He's going to see shots being fired right there he sees some bullets and he's going to see this guy right here so he knows that there are now multiple teams at hydroelectric that he's pushing into he's going to go ahead and land on the roof right we get that high ground we get that cover just in case now he's not on the highest building possible so he's got to be careful but he does have high ground on this guy which is a huge advantage he's able to get that down as he goes to get the thirst, he gets shot from behind. I'm going to highlight this one time here. We're going to slow it down. I'll play it back for you. Watch the strafing while shooting. Actually, I'm not going to play back. We're just going to watch this once. But he does this all the time here. Look at the strafing. Right. Left. Right. That's increasing his rotational aim assist. one 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 So he comes to his teammate. That guy's basically a bullet. Teammate's going to be able to get the down. And there's the wipe right there. Now, here's one below. Watch the reach out right here. As he reach house, look at the centering straight on the window, right? High damage areas allows him to win that gunfight, but he doesn't oversell for this thirst. You know, you got to play a little bit more careful in this game because the, the amount that you get punished is much harder in Warzone 1 because of that lack of outplay. So he's going to go ahead and plate up here. As he goes to push over to plate, he gets shot in the back. So he's going to hide in this corner right here, kind of lose the audio, right? Stop making noise. Keep this guy guessing as to where you actually are. And as he goes that way, he gets shot. Now, right here, as he's going to make his move, look at his plates, right? So he's down about a plate. And watch the hip fire right there. Notice that little bit of hip fire and hitting high damage areas. That's what allows him to win that gunfight. So he's back in. Doesn't worry about the thirst just yet. Now he can start to worry about 
what else is going on around. So he had it down up top of the hill. He had it down below. Not sure if he... I don't know if he got that down below or not. But he's got five kills so far. You know, he's, he's put himself in a few kind of weird spots. But so far, five kills. And now he's got to figure out what's next. You know, where else is somebody? He's going to clear up here. This is the only information he kind of has to act on. And while this guy... It probably isn't thirsted. Or like, he's probably not still down. He might still be in here. So watch him clear. He's clearing. Can't see anything. And as he's working his way up, he's going to go ahead and see this guy flying back in. So he's going to go ahead and work on that. So a lot of... When we're, when we're talking about what we see, right? Parachutes, people running. Of course, getting shot gives away locations. And we're, you know, we're going to see him play that high ground pretty often. Strafing once again. He's able to get that wipe. And now we start to really push this a little bit more. Right there, he's going to loot up real quick. Stow a bunch of plates. Plates are the most important thing, guys. Biggest tip I can give you for looting is focus on plates, gas masks, kill streaks, and maybe guns. You know, that's really what you're focusing on. That guy just got fried. Just absolutely fried. There's enemy number two. And dead right there. So that's where, once again, as he's flying over... By the way, I'm pretty sure his teammate calmed that there were people on him, which is how he knew. Uh, one other quick thing I do want to highlight is this game plays in like a little bit less than 1080 just because of the way he streams on Twitch, but he is playing in 1440. So there are certain things that he'll be able to see that we may not see as clearly in the recording. But... I just wanted to highlight that. Now, when we talk about rotating guys and finding people, use cars. Use cars as much as possible. It's going to speed up your rotation. It's going to give you more cover. It's a safer way to rotate. It allows you to get in the best position possible. That guy's just rotating right there. Easy kill. He's got nine already. He's got nine already right here. Now, what do they do? Right here, we are going to see a little bit of this gameplay strategy that I recommend for you guys, which, by the way, if you are looking to get better, make sure you are subscribed down below. I do videos, of a few videos a week for you guys. I'm going to stop saying that I do videos every day because I've kind of cut back a little bit. But a few videos a week for you guys just helping you improve, you know, really helping you guys get more kills, die less. At the end of the day, that's the way to have the most fun. And, of course, try to win more, too. So we'll focus on that a little bit later. But notice the car. This is one of the best cars because you can easily climb rocks. It gives you uh, a lot of control. Gives you a little bit more cover. You know, the Hummer is probably the best because of the speed. But this allows you to really just climb the mountains. And they're going to go ahead and work their way to this stronghold right here. And go ahead and complete it. Now, as we push into the stronghold, here's what we're going to see. Notice that it is red right there. So it's all, there's already a team on it. So they know they're pushing into some people. And they have to be a little bit careful. Adrian's out. So they're going to focus on taking different angles. And let's watch how this plays out right here. When, you, when he pushes in, there's one crucial thing you have to notice when he pushes in right here you're going to notice the ghillie suit right so he notices the ghillie suit then he notices that person so he downs doesn't go for the thirst what's the first thing if you are this player right here right what is the first thing that you tell your teammate if you go down i just got shot and what is your teammate's first instinct to run out and try to help you so that's exactly what's going to happen here in a second as adrian crosses this guy's going to push out they're able to get that knock gets thirst number one then he's going to get thirst number two and they're still going to go ahead and clear this. They're still going to try to see if there's one more. They're pretty sure that there's one more around here. They're just not 100% sure where. Get the bomb defuse real quick. Make sure you get the legendary crates for the cash flow. By the way, cash flow for them is important just in case they die. They got to be able to come back. Trying to clear it. Clearing the building. Not 100% sure. Here's the shots fired. Turns the corner. That guy's dead. Okay, 12 kills. They finally got loadout, so now they can really start to pick up momentum. Once again, let's go ahead and focus on what is your next play here because they don't know where anybody is, right? They don't have any information about where people are. This is one where we think about the hot areas of the map. So they're actually not going to grab the car this time. Why? Why aren't they grabbing the car? Because they are going to fly. The benefit of high ground, even if, guys, even if you're, like, over this way to the right side over here, if you're on top of a building, you know, the more height you can get, the more you can see. So they're going to go ahead and fly down, which does two things for them. It gives them distance, and it gives them the oversight to kind of scout the area. And they are going to go ahead and go with another option that you should use for information which is going to be your bounty contract i continue to say this if you've been here before that bounty contracts are meta in this game the reason being is it gives you information so you can act on that it gives you an opportunity to get kills and more importantly gives you the cash flow once you get the kills that is why bounties are so important we're going to see him do that one more time at least throughout this game but what do they do as soon as they grab the bounty they're back into the car they're back into safely rotating they're not going to rotate here on foot they're going to go ahead and grab the car here so that they can quickly get over. They can safely get over. They don't have to worry. If they get shot, they can easily pull behind cover and use that. 
right here. Notice he gets caught a little bit. Watch this right here, by the way. This little play that a lot of you probably don't even recognize. A lot of you guys don't think anything of this, but is when he jumps over this wall, his thought process right now is, I am pretty exposed to this guy. So what does he do? He backs up, and he at least gives himself an opportunity. If this guy torches him right now, and he goes down, he's at least going to be behind this wall and give himself a chance to be revived. Trying to see what he can find. And now look, this is the 2v2 kill race dynamic. They are playing aggressive, and they are going to push right here. Guys in the car, so what do they do? They don't, they they just chase. They're going to go. They're going to get in the car. Let's go, or let's roll. So they are immediately getting into the car, and they're going to go chase this guy. That is the only piece of information that they have at the moment, is that this guy is floating around here. So he knows that he can try to catch, you know, they're in the same car. So it's going to be hard to actually catch him, except this guy had to stop, whether it's from refueling, whether it's from damage, or whatever it was. But now they're able to easily get that kill. And the question is always going to be, what is next, right? That is the one thing that you guys want to think about, is because it's where a lot of you struggle. What is the next play? Great, you got a few kills what's next let's keep moving here we don't want to slow our pace down they are right back to the bounty contract so that was the bounty contract from the next circle so every time there's another circle more contracts pop up so they're going to go ahead and grab that bounty and once again act on that information they are fighting they haven't had too many scenarios where they are fighting out number just yet Notice right here, 12 kills for FIFA, 6 kills for Adrian, so they're plus uh, plus a few right now. There was something, some dilemma with somebody uh, dev erring, and then it just kind of kills carry over. So I don't know what the actual gap is right now. I don't want to confuse anybody with that. But in this game right now, they are up a few kills. Right here, they're just going to go push Bounty. So this is where Bounties are great, right? Because in that last kill, they got information... They got the kill, and they got the cash flow. Same thing right here. They're going to go ahead and push this direction and see what they can find. Let's go ahead and now challenge the most wanted. Notice that the most wanted is the bounty. Super unfortunate for that guy because this is a ton of cash flow. Most wanted don't always pop up because there's not always teams doing them, but most wanted are very similar to bounty contracts. It gives you information and it gives you the ability to get cash if you get the kill. So what ends up happening is Adrian has to reload here. FIFA's going to just pop out of the car. Notice that he's looking this direction when he gets out, right? He's, he's tracking this guy. So when he gets out, he's pretty centered on that enemy. He's able to easily get that team wipe okay what's next right we no longer have information one thing that i do want to say they are very careful in these 2v2s about popping uavs why because they don't want to necessarily give that advantage to the other team as well right so if they pop a uav for themselves to get kills they're also doing the same thing for the other two guys now why did adrian pop the uav here because one of the guys is dead so that's why he popped the uav here because they have a one man advantage they're going to go ahead and figure out information as to where people are so far, we've seen them fly. We talked about shots being fired and, and kind of hearing shots being fired. We talked about, you know, just kind of seeing movement. We've talked about bounties, most wanted. Now we've got UAVs and we can start to really push over. This is where we see FIFA really start to execute. You know, one of the... FIFA is one of the smartest players when he's actually in engagements, and we're going to see that right here. So Adrian's going to hop out right there. Notice they're going to split this a little bit. They're going to focus on different angles. He's got two right in front. First thing that you notice is he stops the car, right? So he's going to use the car to his advantage as cover. He parks it, and now he's in a good spot. He gets mortared. He's not worried just yet. He knows there's time before that mortar strike actually hits. By the way, this is one example where I said that I think 1440 makes a huge difference. Like, it's kind of hard to see where these guys are. And a lot of you are going to be like, or some of you will be like, how did he know they were there? It's 1440. You know, it makes a huge difference. So he's able to get both of those downs, but of course can't oversell for the thirst just yet. There's one thirst right there. He's He's got cover, right? He's got this wall blocking off. Now he's going to go ahead and pull back. Right, he's going to pull back to the next car. He's going to quickly plate up, kind of keep track of what's going on. They do have the most wanted contract to the left. Trying to see what he can find. He's got one right there. And they are calming really well to each other. Notice their spacing. Notice their angles, right? Adrian's on kind of pushing the issue a little bit. FIFA's got this guy backside over here. How do you see him? He saw him right over this way. Yeah, he's got him like right there. Yeah, you could barely see him right about here. That's another enemy right there. Again, 1440, probably a little bit clearer. So as he goes to challenge, he's going to play high ground, right? Get on top so we can see over that wall. He's able to get that knock. Adrian's able to get that thirst right there. Now they're going to go ahead and push over. So you kind of see how the spacing happens and that constant changing dynamic of when to challenge versus when not to challenge. First two guys, he's able to, and they're just pinging right there to get that live ping. And once they get that live ping, there he sees him again. Keeps the live ping so that he can keep track of where this guy is. There's the down. 
there is the thirst right there. So when we look at that fight, right, they pull up in the car. He uses the car as cover. The guy mortars, so he plays a little bit patient. He's able to get two knocks, but he can't get the thirst. He repositions. He's able to get one thirst, then has to pull back and play it up. He stays engaged while Adrian's fighting close quarters. He's staying engaged there so that he can still kind of cover. He's able to pick up a few more kills. And what are they at right now? So they're at, he's at 16 already. So he's kind of, you know, 23, 18. So they're kind of plus five. Pentagon, unfortunately, goes down again. So now what do they do, right? Always ask that question of what is next. That is kind of the theme for today's video. What is next? They grab the heli. Why? Multiple reasons. Number one, versatility with movement. You are able to get around the map quicker. There's no doubt about it. But okay, you can grab a car too. There's not cars around, right? But okay, the heli versus the car. What's the difference? Well, the biggest advantage with the heli, there's positives and negatives. There's pros and cons to each car that you have. The downside to the heli is it's kind of hard to control and you can easily get smoked out of it. But the positive is that high ground once again. Guys, high ground is so beneficial in this game because of this right here. It allows you to see everything that is going on. I really want you to encourage where even if you were in this area right here, and you're trying to see what's going on, get to high ground of this building right here and try to see if anybody's over here. You can might see movement this way. You might see, you know, uh, a buyback. You might see something that will allow you to then fly over. Then that high ground allows you to fly over instead of having to run over there. So right here, trying to see what they can find. Don't really see anything just yet. So this is one where we are thinking about hot areas of the map. So they don't really see anything here. Okay, what about caves? Caves, there's generally, you know, one or two teams around caves. So they're going to go ahead. They're going to fly over. And if you don't really know where to go, kind of push those hot areas. What you're going to see is, okay, nothing really in caves. They're not catching any movement. There's nothing really on the rooftops. Okay, let's go hydroelectric. Is there anything in oil? They're checking oil right now. They don't see anything that way. Is there anything over this way? Not totally see anything just yet. You don't really see anything on the rooftops. And right about here, somebody is going to... Oh, Adrian saw somebody. Adrian saw somebody, and they're getting shot at. Okay, so now we know we can engage, right? One of the biggest things of vehicles is people will shoot at you because they can't resist, at which point you know where they are. So they went from all the way, literally on the bottom outskirts of the map into the action here at Hydroelectric in a very short period of time. That is going to keep our pace. Let's pull back right here. One right, I want you to, I want to highlight this guy and how he plays this. There's one right about here. You see that guy right there? I want you to keep that guy in mind. He's gonna play rooftop. When we talk about high ground, that guy below him has no angle on this guy, right? Or has no angle on FIFA. So he's gonna be able to knock one. He's not going to worry about the thirst. He's going to focus on knock number two. He's going to go ahead and precision. And as he pushes down, he's able to get this guy right here. That's a really hard... He's able to track that much easier than the other guy is because he's falling down. When you talk about reach out right here, he's got self-revive. He's in a really good spot with cover. He knows that guy's in the building. And watch how they play this spacing-wise. Watch how they play this spacing. He's going to loot up real quick. He's got 20 rounds, so he's going to quick reload. Yep, jailbreak. They're all back. And look at him right here. He's a little bit exposed right here. He's a little bit out in the open, but he's ready to rock if he needs to. He gets the break. He, this guy's going to re-peak. He's able to get the down. And by the way, one thing I want to notice here, look at the headshots, guys. Look at where he's aiming the second time. Watch him aim higher. Notice, I mean, guys, the headshot multiplier is just insane on these guns. So, okay. What is next, right? They're going to be able to get that thirst right there. What is next? They know people are flying in in the sky. Can't really torch those guys. So what do we do, right? How do we go about finding people from here? What would a lot of you do? I think a lot of you, what you would end up doing is just wandering around, trying to see what you can find. You know, you'd be a little bit nervous to push anywhere. No, they're going to go back and they're just going to kind of keep this thing moving. Back up to the heli. Somebody popped UAV. He needs to put in a plate. There's the plate right there. Okay, so they get UAV. There's nobody anywhere close to them. So what are they going to do? Now they go ahead and push this way with the heli. Heli allows them to rotate quicker. Heli allows them to rotate safer. Heli allows them to easily get high ground on this team, right? So what's going to end up happening is Adrian's going to drop right there. FIFA's going to focus on getting high ground in the tower. So he's going to go ahead and just kind of make sure he doesn't miss because this is where he really needs to be. And Adrian's able to get the team wipe. By the way, I think that one of the biggest themes is when we talk about rotating and finding people is just that benefit of the vehicles. And it's somewhere that a lot of, it's something that a lot of you don't think about and a lot of you really struggle with, which is like making it a point to have vehicles. Now, right here, he's got 20. So we're still on, you know, we've still got another 15 kills right here. We've still got another 15 kills in this game and we still need to focus on how he's going to find those 15 people. 
he got shot from over this way. Adrian, of course, pinged him. So Adrian saw him. And watch how he challenges this. Notice how he challenges the heady. And he's going to play. He's a little bit exposed right here, but he's ready to pull back to cover. That's where the cover is the most important dynamic. He can easily chow this, and now he does have the advantage, right? Now he can keep this pressure on, and as long as he anticipates and executes, which he does, and this next situation is the one I really, really want to highlight for you guys. These next two team wipes are absolutely insane. There's the down. There's the thirst. Still has one plate left, so not even close to losing that. And he, he says, kids up the mountain. So this is where it gets a little bit tougher because he does not have a vehicle anymore, right? He's got the the um, LTV behind him, the one over to his right, but not 100. I don't even know what that that's, that one's called. Let's call it the buggy. He's got the buggy back behind him. I think the LTV is like the true armor truck. The true armor truck. Trying to see what he can find. Playing a little bit of high ground, right? He's got a little bit right here. It's not like he has the most high ground, but it at least allows him to scout the area a little bit more than if he was all the way down. Now, as he pushes over this way, he knows that, guys, there's still 33 other people left. So they have to be somewhere, right? They're not really in caves. They cleared hydroelectric. Remember that UAV that got popped? There was nobody in hydro. So there's nobody hydro. There's nobody caves, which means they got to continue to be on this side of the map. So they're just going to go ahead and keep rotating and try to see what they can find. He's going to go ahead and push up. Notice he's not really worried about tax sprinting. He actually doesn't tax sprint too much. He tends to sprint this way a lot just because it allows you to get your gun out much quicker. As he's getting high ground, why is he getting high ground? He's getting high ground to see what he can find, and he sees this guy rotating this way. He's also getting high ground because he can jump off of this rock and potentially fly all the way over to here if he hits it right. But he ends up seeing a guy right there down below. Notice the guy right by the car. He's going to go ahead and challenge here. Biggest thing is don't land with your parachute out so he can just kind of full send. He's able to get knock number one. Tracks that guy. He's able to get knock number two. There's two more kills for him, 22 and 23. Still got 12 more and the end game. Right here, go ahead and Lockman sub back. Grab some plates. By the way, look at his look at his uh, backpack right here. Right, he's basically yes, he could use a kill streak maybe, but it's basically all plates, and he's got empty space in here. If he grabs something that he doesn't want, he's gonna go ahead and make sure he gets rid of it. This way, he can keep as many plates in as possible. Like I said, plates, kill streaks, gas mask. If you have one, which he already does, those are the little things that you want to keep track of. Now, I just love this play because it kind of it, it sums up. Warzone 2 in a nutshell, which is going to be the ability to rechallenge. Your rechallenge is different. Your rechallenge in Warzone 1 was based on movement, right? So we would reach out with a slide cancel or jump peek, break that camera, and be able to get the down and thirst. Can't really do that in Warzone 2. It's much harder. Your Warzone 2 rechallenge is going to be based on positioning. So right here, he's behind the rock. He's on a head glitch, and that guy wants to keep the pressure on, right? When you break somebody, you try to keep the pressure on. This guy just gets caught right here. So watch the reach out. That guy's still rechallenging. Yeah, there's an execution component that to this with FIFA. FIFA's going to pop behind the rock as he peeks up. He doesn't see the guy just yet. Yep, there he is. And he knows, or actually, I think he did see him. Did he? Did he see him left? Let me see if he saw him left. He saw him somehow. Does he see him over? Oh, he saw him right there. Did you see him? Did you catch him? Right behind this tree. This tree right here. Watch. These are the little things that they pick up on. Just a little bit of movement, right? You see him pushing there. So notice how he keeps this rock between him and the enemy. Can't get him there. Now he sees him right there behind the bush. There's the team wipe, right? So that's where we reach out and and we kind of take advantage of people playing aggressive and getting caught out in the open and the lack of outplay potential. So by getting behind cover and then from there, he's able to re-challenge enemy number one, get the down. He pops behind his cover. He plates up. He re with enemy number two. And by the way, Adrian ended up dying to the left over here. Adrian died over to the left. Yep, to add Saeed Mall. So he's going to go ahead and push up the hill right here. Let's go ahead and jump forward just a little bit. He's going to work his way over. As he pushes up, watch the patience right here. Now, this one gets a little bit interesting because I don't know how these guys actually saw him. I don't. They might have had bird's eye and like an enemy UAV got popped. But, you know, that guy's just, they're out in the open. He's just not able to quite get that down. And then he gets sniped right there. He gets sniped at. So he doesn't really have an angle. He doesn't really have a play just yet, and these guys are just very good players. You know, these guys are a very good squad of four. One's covering from the shack. He can't quite get this down right here. He gets smoked. He gets down from the right. So he's basically just getting shot from everywhere. And as we push forward, he tries to drop down here. He's going to be able to get the self-revive off. Can he make a play, though? Can he make a play to get out of this? No. He's going to go down. So he's going to go in Gouge. Gouge, nothing happens. He doesn't get his Gouge. So he loses the two free kills. But by the way, just as I said earlier, remember when I told you to... Uh 
where he was a bullet and he almost went into Gouge, he would not have been able to come back in here. Adrian and him would have been dead dead. So that's where because he was finally able to get behind cover in that early game scenario and his teammate was able to revive him, that at least gave him a chance to get to Gouge and come back, which 99% of the time those players are going to win Gouge. Yep, whole team on Lodi right here. And this... This gets absolutely insane because he deals with no ammo, and we're gonna. This is where he just is such a great player when it comes to outsmarting enemies. He's got a very good Warzone IQ, so he's gonna go ahead and just wait for those guys to to dip a little bit and go ahead and fly in. He's gonna grab Lodi right here, so he's gonna grab Lodi once again. He's going with the RPK and he's going with the Lockman. I think he goes, yeah, he goes with his overkill. So the downside is he doesn't spawn in with a ton of AR ammo, and he's gonna burn it pretty quick. He, oh, he no, he sees this guy first. Notice a little bit of movement right here, just a little bit, and then there's no audio, guys. There's no audio when you creep up like this. So this guy doesn't know that he's. He has no. This guy has no reason to know that FIFA's actually here. There's no reason to, right? That, there's no... The guy clearly doesn't have high alert. He actually missed AR ammo right there. That guy had AR. That guy 100% had. I didn't see that until now. That guy dropped AR. Now he's going to go ahead, break that guy up top. That's just an execution thing. He's able to get that knock, but, but he's not getting that thirst. There's no way he can get that thirst. And he knows that he's low AR. So he's kind of caught in this really tough spot at the moment of what do I do? Because... It, you look at the circle, guys. The circle is very much an AR endgame. It's very much a positioning. It's not a close quarters in a ton of buildings where you can go challenge. You know, this is very much an AR endgame or, a, a, you know, AR long range end, endgame, we'll say. So what does he do, right? Well, he gets that knock. He knows that he has to kind of go here. Like, he's got to be strategic and push up now to try to get AR ammo or else he just doesn't have a chance. So he's going to smoke that way to kind of distract them a little bit. As he pushes up, he's just kind of seeing what he can find. Trying to see what he can find. Not 100% sure where. There's one. There's two. But he catches another enemy right there because that guy got the wipe on that team. So he's able to get basically two kills. He's got 29. He's got freaking 10 spectators. 12 other people left, and he's by himself. I am sh kind of shocked that he did not try to grab AR ammo with the gas mask and kind of push back into zone and try to get some AR because he's just in a really bad spot. Another just absolutely insane play right here. Notice that guy pushing up. He might be dead here. Using the dolphin dive to finesse. No, the dolphin dive does not replace the versatility of slide canceling, but the dolphin dive makes you a harder target to hit. It resets your tax sprint and is great for situations like that where you're caught out in the open. As he's pushing up, he catches the guy over to, I don't know if you caught that. He caught a guy over to his right. Little bit of movement. One tip I can give you guys, there's no movement on this map. There's very little movement, right? This isn't Battlefield where buildings are falling. So if you see a little bit of movement, even if it's out of the corner of your eye, it's either a player or a bird, and you'll be able to figure out which one it is pretty quickly. So as you see the movement over to the right, you see him pushing. And by the way, Adrian's being an extra set of eyes. There's the sniper. There's enemy number one. He gets the thirst. Checks for AR ammo. Can't quite find anything. There's enemy number two. Now he's got to just grab the cast off. That's his only option, right? He's got no ammo in either gun at this point. Challenges. Now, this is where I want to pause, right? This is where I want to pause because what a lot of you don't think about in this situation is they're even. That guy's broken, right? So this is just a matter of who can get that shot off. So as he pushes up, and I'll just let this play. I promise. Hands off the keyboard. I promise. There's one. He's going to go ahead. He's going to be able to down that guy. Doesn't worry about the thirst just yet because he doesn't even have ammo for it. Break. Now, as he pushes up, Thirst, challenge that way, doesn't see him, challenge that way, knows that he keeps pushing around, finally sees him right there, and there he's able to get the kill. Now, he's got to keep moving because he's got gas. So, like, he's just he's just kind of going through it at the moment. He can't find his RPK because he thinks his RPK is in the wall, and he's just, I mean, he's down bad right now. He is absolutely down bad. Finally gets some AR ammo right here. 32 kills, still eight other players left. Grabs the precision. Really good. He's going to use that to his advantage really well here in a little bit. He's going to go ahead and push up. He's going to focus on his high ground a little bit. Focus on his high ground. Doesn't know the breakdown of these teams, right? Because he's playing quad. So, he, I, oh, yeah, based on math, you're not going to have... Well, you could actually have a full squad here. You could have like a 4-1... 4-1-1-2? 4 4 one, one, two, four, four, two, one, one. It could be the breakdown of the... Okay, now another enemy died. So, you don't really know the breakdown right here. That was my point of that. Especially in quads, it gets much harder than duos. Okay, so this cast off 762 is not that good, so he's got to be careful here. He's got to really be careful. Gets a tough circle pull. He's got six enemy, five other people left, so he's got a really good shot to win this. He's not in a bad spot here. He's just got to execute. Trying to see what he can find. Catches those guys moving. Catches those guys moving. 
So watch him play positioning right here. Watch him play a little bit of positioning. He's going to creep up and try to catch one of them out in the open. Yep, a little bit of patience. A little bit of patience. Trying to catch one of them rotating. Trying to catch one of them where he can actually get a knock. Now watch this move. He precisions two jump off because they have to, and one goes right. Now it's unfortunate because he can't get that thirst. Right? He, there's another one right there. This cast off just ain't it. Like, it's just not. And this is this is a floor loot cast off, by the way. This is definitely a floor loot one that you can get out of a crate. So he's going to go ahead. Watch how he plays this. He's going to get the re-knock right here. If he's going to focus on that guy, he gets the re-knock. Doesn't worry about the thirst just yet. As he pushes down, he ends up catching two guys literally right below him. I mean, that's just the nature of Warzone 2 that people just sit wherever. I mean, people sit in circle wherever they can get, and now he's in a 1v3 situation. Cluster mine right below. He's got to find a way to get back to his high ground right here. 1v2 scenario. 1v2, he just gets a little bit stuck. He just gets stuck on the rock. And what I will tell you here is if he has his RPK, I think he wins this. I think he wins that if he has his RPK because I think he is able to easily get... I think he's, able, I think he's better suited. He would basically be able to... With an RPK, that guy would be down. This first guy right here would be down and thirsted. And then I think this guy would be over to the left. I think that guy would be down and thirsted as well. You know, instead of FIFA getting broken here, he's probably in a really good spot. And then what you have, if those two guys are taken out of the equation, then it is down to, what, four other people left. So it's, a one, it's one guy here. It's FIFA. It's one guy here. And then the two guys down below. So I think he's in a really good spot to win that if he has the RPK, which is unfortunate. So I hope you found today's video helpful. As always say, let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.